I don't usually fall for someone I don't even care who I run from You're Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Kimbria. If you guys have been with my channel for a while, you guys know how much I've been looking forward to this project. I am so excited that we are finally starting on our fireplace wall, and I just have to say it is amazing. Um, I also want to give a big thanks to Costway for sponsoring today's video. can't see when we're doing that so we're drawing out lines so like this is the left end of the fireplace these lines are all the studs so we have those all marked out that way he knows what to connect to and then right end of fireplace over here we just have center and where I want the top of the mantle to be and then down here is where we want the fireplace to start. So from afar, you can't really see almost anything we did, but it was just kind of framing out how we want everything structured on the wall. So we cut these boards to length. We are doing, the fireplace overall became about 73 inches with the shiplap on it, but we measured it out to 72. These boards are just to make it so you have your supports. To get the fireplace center on the wall, there's no guarantee that those studs are gonna be the exact area you wanted. So we are just putting a couple boards on the wall, that way those can be our supports. And this one is a bit wider because you're gonna see later on that we actually do a built-in shelf because we are a real family and we have uh, video game systems and modems and all those things that are normally around your TV. So we still wanted to be able to store those and everything but we wanted it a little bit more disguised. So if you are real life here like we are and trying to think practical, like your kids have an Xbox, your modem, things like that, we are gonna show you how we were able to make the fireplace look really, really pretty and intentional, but still be practical for the everyday family. So before we started on this project, I had probably watched about 10 different videos on building your own fireplace and fireplace walls and things like that, just to kind of get an idea of how we were going to build it out. And a lot of people built the frames on the ground and then put them in place. We decided against that because our house is a 1970s house. So there's no straight lines. There's nothing like perfectly even. Um, we also knew we wanted to drill into the floor as well as the ceiling and make sure this thing was like sturdy, sturdy, going to stand the test of time because we know when our dogs play that they often like go sliding across the room and we didn't want them running into the fireplace and then knocking it down. 
So we were making sure that it was 100% secure and safe. Um, plus, like I said, with not everything being 100% flush in this house, with it being an older home, this made it that we were able to make those tiny adjustments from one side to the next by building it in place instead of on the floor and putting it in place. Um, you can definitely, especially if you have a newer home, build it on the floor and then put it up. It might be a little bit easier, but honestly, this was not that hard to do it this way. A lot of the framework Bobby did just because he's faster at it and better at it. Um, but you will see later on that I get into it. I'm not afraid of power tools and things like that. Um, but I have like the most difficult time sometimes drilling into studs. I don't know what it is if I just don't have enough force behind myself, but Bobby definitely can do a much better job. I am super excited to be partnering up again with Costway. You guys have heard me talk about Costway a good amount of times. Um, they helped us out when we redid our bedroom and gave us a fireplace and some furniture in there. They also gave us the small fireplace for in our sunroom. So always love working with Costway. Costway is an all-in-one shopping site where you can find pretty much anything you can imagine and everything at really affordable prices. Like I said, I have a bunch of stuff from Costway and have been super satisfied with everything. These fireplaces have made such a world of a difference in our home and they are extremely affordable. But you can also find furniture and toys, all sorts of things that you would want in your home. So check out my link in the description. I will have these fireplaces listed, but I also will be sharing a 15% off discount code site-wide. So it is the perfect time to stock up on some Christmas gifts and stocking stuffers for everyone in the family. So here's Bobby building the shelf that we wanted to house all the electrical stuff that we didn't want seen. Um, I will end up painting this black that you're going to see here in just a minute, but this is what made it a lot nicer to still be able to have the pretty mantle and all the practical stuff. So we wanted that backboard to go taller, that way we could paint it completely black so that if you looked in it kind of blended with the rest of the fireplace. Um, however, I did still end up adding uh, black fabric to the front of it to disguise it a little bit more, which you'll see later on. And that worked out perfect. Like it is pretty much seamless when you look at the fireplace. You don't see any of the mechanical stuff. You just get to see the pretty view of the fireplace, the mantle, um, and the reason we're going with black, originally I was going between black and white, wasn't 100% sure, but when we did our bedroom and I painted above the fireplace black, I loved how the TV just kind of faded into it. It wasn't this big black box that was almost an eyesore. So this makes it that if the TV is off, it just blends in with the fireplace or little trick if you don't have one of those fancy schmancy framed TVs. You can just go on YouTube and look up screensavers and find some really pretty screensavers to put on your TV. That way if guests are over, it looks like you have a big photo above the fireplace. These supports on top are one to help us connect the shiplap, but two, we lined them up with 
where we wanted to mount the TV. That way when we went to mount it, we had studs exactly where we needed them. Um, that is the other nice thing about building this is you can really control exactly where you needed absolutely everything to go. Um, so this made it super easy that once we started putting the TV up, it went up so much faster than trying to find the studs in the wall because we knew exactly where we had all of our studs placed. I've been trying to go the other way, but I can't seem to get you out of my head, out of my head. I've been fighting everything you'll be, cause everything you'll be is changing me. All right, so we are on to day three. Bobby actually had a doctor's appointment on this morning. He actually does on most mornings. He almost has a doctor's appointment every day of the week. Um, but I wanted to start on this ship lap. I will say, like, this morning, I did not want to work on it. Like, I was trying to convince myself. But this is definitely one of those projects that even though you're like, oh, it's going to be so much work, I don't want to start on this. Once you start, you get motivated because you start seeing it all come together and then you don't want to stop. Like you just want to see it done. So that was really, really nice. Um, but if you are going with the white shiplap, I would recommend doing these corners at 45 degree angles. It'll just give you a cleaner look. However, black is very forgiving and hides a lot of little imperfections um so there really was no need for us to do the 45 degree angles because the black helps it just flow seamlessly throughout the entire project Let me And then to connect it, I'm just using the brad nailer. This went up once it was cut and everything, it went up super fast. It just locks into place. You nail it in and good to go. Like super, super simple. Um, the hardest part was making all the cuts. Just because I had to make so many cuts, it was like I felt like I was cutting forever. Um, but when you're putting them up, it goes so quickly and it's really satisfying because you start really seeing the project come together really fast when you're installing it. So we quickly moved Freya's dresser back into her room and put all of the things in the shelf. So Bobby's just wiring it real quick. Freya's helping-ish. Freya, hi. And I just cut up all the boards we need for that other side. 
I was working on the sides while Bobby was at a doctor's appointment. That way, he can help with the front because he wants to do yeah. hidden storage-ish down here since we got all that open space um, and without having basements, storage here is king. But I, I don't know how to do doors and stuff. Freya, you're in the fireplace. Freya. <laughs> Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Hi. So yeah, he's doing that and then I can attach all the boards to the other side and then we can work on the front. <laughs> what are you doing? Freya. Freya. All right. Freya. <laughs> Now, I'm definitely not like a beginner DIYer. Um, however, like most of the projects we have done in this house, it's our first time doing them. So these are definitely things that I think a lot of people, the hardest part is getting the like faith and like, willpower that you can do it until I at least try it um, when it comes to these projects because they can seem very intimidating um, but the more you do the easier these projects get like this fireplace went together so much quicker than the one in the bedroom just because we had tried it before um, and YouTube is your best friend like I watched so many videos and then we just did it did we make some mistakes? Sure. Um, but as you go, it definitely gets a lot easier over time. Now, these doors, on the other hand, these took pretty much the whole day of day three. Wait, is it day three or day th two? This was day two. I said day three before. This was only day two. Um, but I got the sides up and Bobby was working on these doors all day. But I really wanted to get the doors done and all the shiplap up. Um, that way the next day I could paint. We are going to be, I ordered on Amazon, we haven't received them yet, those push hinges. So instead of having hardware on the doors, it's just going to be a push and you open them. And this is going to be really nice just for storage of decor and just random little things. Bobby hates unutilized space. So when he saw all the space under the fireplace that we could use for storage, he knew he wanted to figure out how to make doors. He's never done it before. Um, it was a lot of trial and error and taking them on and taking them off. I definitely did not show the whole process because it was a lot of everything. Like so many times being redone, done, redone over and over again. But in the end, he figured it out. It looks really, really good. And we have all that storage that he wanted to add. So the cord, we did decide to not move electrical to behind the fireplace for the cording. Now we decided that because we are going to end up building built-ins on both sides of the fireplace. So the cord that's coming out the side, we wanted to have access to it. Um, and this makes it now that when those built-ins go in, you're not even going to see that cord. Um, and 
you'll see later on. I do disguise it uh, so it's not as obvious, but it's definitely one of those things that we did think about it over time. Um, Bobby also bought these really cool, they look like outlets. They're like the size of an outlet cover, um, but they have like little hairs or rubber knobs on them um, for the cords to come in and out. So instead of needing these big holes and they don't look finished, he put these in and they look so good. So just like professional <laughs> and we are definitely not professionals um, to make it that wherever there was cords that needed to come out of the fireplace, they could, but it still looks really, really good. So by the end of day two, we were super happy with the way the fireplace looked. I did go to bed and Bobby put up the mount for the mantle and built the mantle. Um, he wanted to get it done. That way he could just be done with pretty much his part of the project. Um, there's still minor things that he helped me with, but he really wanted to get all the woodwork stuff done. So he did that after I went to bed. Um, but now it's the next day and I'm just going in and painting all the shiplap, which the hardest part were all the little grooves to be able to get in there and um, have it go. I only needed to do two coats though of this black, so it really wasn't too, too bad. And once I got going with it, it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't mind painting, uh, which is normally why I do the painting and Bobby does a lot of the carpentry type stuff because he doesn't mind that and I don't mind this. Um, but like I said, the biggest pain in the butt was painting and actually like making sure it got into these grooves really, really well. I did later on end up going in with one of my um, detail brushes for like when I actually paint, paint like pictures and um, murals and stuff and that made it a lot easier than this bigger paintbrush this bigger one was definitely much harder so when I changed it out it made my life so much easier it's all All right, now cost, because I know often people wonder with projects like this, like how much does it run you to do a project like this? Now, I had watched videos of people doing this before and they were about a year or two old. Um, and I have to say, it's not as cheap as it used to be. Um, people would, were saying how they did it for like under $200, they built the entire fireplace. Wood alone costed us about $500. Um, now, mind you, shiplap isn't cheap. It was $10 a board, and we needed a lot of boards. So about $250 of that cost was just in shiplap, and then everything else. Um, and then the fireplace, obviously, as well, and that's going to depend. Luckily, like I said, Costway is super, super affordable, um, and they had the cheapest nicest fireplace that I could find and I did a lot of looking around um, I looked on Amazon and everything and for the nice ones on Amazon they were like a thousand dollars so for under five hundred dollars we were able to 
get this one from Costway, um, which yes, they did gift it to us, but in case you guys are looking to do this project, I want you guys to know what that runs and add it onto it. So overall, to do the entire fireplace, it was under a thousand dollars so is it cheap no but it makes such a massive um statement in this room that i definitely think it was worth the investment and i do feel like down the road if we ever do sell this house because i've said it before i'm not someone to say this is our forever home because you just don't know you don't know what the road's gonna bring um but if we do ever sell this house i do think that this feature will add value to the home. Um, but I was super excited about this part. This is when we started to pull it together. So we got to mount the TV again, put on the mantle, and then my absolute, absolute favorite part, decorating. Because that is just the jewelry that pulls it all together. I love these little stones. They're beautiful when the fireplace is on, but even when it's off, it is such an elegant and just upscale, serene look. I absolutely loved the gem look. It's totally different than the feel of the fireplace in the bedroom, but I feel like it works so, so well for the family room. All right, so I forgot to film this portion real quick, but I was at Hobby Lobby, and I decided just to pick up some black fabric. We stapled that on, so this easily just like lifts up to get at the stuff underneath it, but it just gives a much, much better backdrop instead of seeing the router and the security system and the Xbox and everything else. So, but now, I get to decorate the mantle, which is my favorite part. So if you remember when I did the front entry, I had this little vase that I had found at Home Goods. Everything else was from Hobby Lobby except for this. I really, really liked it. So I did, never returned it because I knew I'd be decorating more places in this house and I would find a nice area for it. And I think it works really pretty with the mantle and the fireplace. I wanted lighter items. That way it would pop off of the black fireplace. I was really bummed. I wanted to do two candlesticks on this side. However, 
the one was too tall to be able to fit next to it and the mantle was not quite wide enough so it all worked out in the end i also found a really pretty um beaded like container that you're gonna see here in just a second that i put here it is i put that next to it and it worked out just as well it is really really pretty a lot of decorating is trial and error i am one of those people that i'm just not afraid of returning stuff i'll buy a couple things um, to be able to try it out and whatever I end up not using, I just return. Or if I really love it, I keep it so I can use it for a different place in the house. But now we're gonna do all the befores. I am going way back, guys, way back to when we first moved in. I say way back, it was four months ago. Um, but I feel like I had to show the before the before of this room and then the after, because this after is phenomenal to think about what this house looked like four months ago to today is so different so extreme but i am extremely happy as well i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to hit that like button leave me a comment down below and if you're new here i would love if you would subscribe and join me on my journey here on youtube but i'll see you guys next time bye